Hina Matsuri, or Girls' Day, is held every year on March 3rd. Hina Matsuri is one of the five seasonal festivals called Gosekku that are held on auspicious dates of the Chinese calendar, the first day of the first month, the third day of the third month, and so on. Hina Matsuri was traditionally known as the Peach Festival, or Momo no Sekku, as peach trees typically began to flower around this time. Each year during the latter half of February, a hinadan or platform on which the dolls are displayed is carefully erected and covered in red fabric. Handmade dolls representing the emperor, empress, and other members of the imperial court are carefully unpacked and placed in a specific arrangement according to rank and duty. Much as a Western family might gather to decorate a tree for Christmas, Hina Matsuri is often a time spent together looking at the Hina dolls while enjoying special foods, drinks, games, and songs. Typical foods include churashi zushi, hishi mochi, ichigo daifuku, and sakura mochi. The basis of Hina Matsuri is to ensure a healthy life and good fortune for young girls. There is a very old Japanese belief that dolls can deflect and absorb evil and misfortune. A ritual called nagashibina, or doll floating, developed during which straw dolls were put into small boats and floated on a river and out to sea, thus sending bad spirits away and protecting them from misfortune. Girls eventually absorbed the customs into their games of dressing dolls, and by the 18th century, it had developed into the annual Hina Matsuri festival that we know today. The festival now centers around the Hina Niño dolls, which are dressed in the costumes of the old imperial court, featuring beautiful fabrics and fine embroidery. The complete set, or Hina Kazari, consists of seven levels and features 15 dolls each with detailed props and personal items. Arranged to resemble an imperial wedding, each level from top to bottom is significant and holds much meaning for the viewer. The emperor and empress hold a special place as guests of honor. They are both dressed in kimono, a traditional long loose robe with wide sleeves and tied with a sash. Originally worn as a formal garment in Japan, Kimono evolved and has many variations depending on the wearer and the event. From traditional methods involving strict rules and particular etiquette to more modern ways of wearing this unique garment, the kimono serves as an example of true Japanese style. Let's watch and learn as Professor Amaretus, Kimiko Gunji, and teaching assistant Samantha Chappelle dress volunteer model Natalie in Furi Sode a formal style of kimono distinguished by its long sleeves that are worn by young, usually unmarried women on special formal occasions. Dressing in any form of traditional kimono is quite complicated and should be taken seriously and often includes an assistant or two. Taking up to an hour, one should set aside plenty of time as to not be rushed or hurried. All of the many pieces should be carefully and strategically laid out to make the process more efficient. Natalie is already dressed in the proper undergarments, which consists of harajuban, kimono underwear, and the nagajuban, or under kimono. Gunji sensei starts by rolling up the sleeves of the nagajuban. This kimono was originally worn by Natalie's grandmother and has been handed down to her mom and then to her. This generational exchange is a special part of owning kimono. Kimono are made from one bolt of hand-dyed silk fabric. Natalie holds the small rolls as the kimono is placed on her shoulders. A clip is added pulling at the back of the neck holding the red and white collars in place. It is very important that those collars show slightly under the kimono collar. Adjustments and width are made by the amount wrapped around the hip. Several attempts are made to get it just right. The height is adjusted by placing the kimono on Natalie's hip and then raising it so the bottom hem is just off the floor. The other side is wrapped around and held in place. It is very important that kimono always wraps left panel over right panel.
This elastic band is a modern and more comfortable version of what would have been fabric. It is used to make adjustment for the kimono length according to the wearer's height. Wrapped on the hips, the excess fabric from the top is folded down neatly over it. The date jime is similar in the way that it also had received a modern update to elastic, featuring clips to hold it in place. It is tied around the outside of the kimono, flattening the excess fabric on top. Each kimono style has a coordinating under kimono with the sleeves of both the exact same length. The under kimono sleeve rolls are carefully dropped and nested inside the furisode sleeves. The neck and collars are checked and constantly maintained, and the fabric is smooth often so that there are no folds or wrinkles. Having no buttons, zippers, or velcro, a kimono is held in place by layers and many strings. The next layer is the obi, the most decorative layer. The most luxurious obi is called maru obi where both sides are covered with luxurious woven patterns and brocade. The obi we are using today is called fukuro obi. Nearly 15 feet long and 1 foot wide, it is the same length of maru obi, but a back portion of fukuro obi is made of plain white silk cloth, making it less bulky and easier to tie. The color and pattern has been chosen to contrast with the kimono rather than coordinate, or match exactly, as in Western fashion. The obi is rested over the shoulder and then wrapped around the waist. Notice how the pattern portion is starting to show. At this point, two boards or obi ita are added. Inserted into the obi fold in the back and then the front, they stiffen the obi to keep its shape and prevent creasing while moving. The obi is pulled tightly to create tension, then secured with another clip. Because Natalie is wearing layers of undergarments, it looks more constricting than it feels. The underlying structure of the bow is created and secured with a temporary strip of fabric called koshihimo that is tied to the front. Next, another contemporary strap called sanjuhimo is wrapped around Natalie, tied in front, and tucked onto the top of the obi. This unique addition features three overlaying straps of elastic that will be used to hold the various parts of the bow in place. The first part, or right side of the bow, is measured, then accordion folded to create the shape. The first elastic strap of the Sanju Himo is wrapped around. Next, the left side is created and secured with the second strap. As Gunji Sensei carefully calculates the last element of the bow, Samantha takes the time to make sure the sleeves look perfect by pinning the under kimono sleeve onto the furisode sleeve, just giving a hint of color from within. The final and largest portion of the bow is held in place as the final strap is pulled over to secure it. As adjustments are made, Samantha prepares the next set of ties, the obi makura and the obiage, or obi pillow, and the silk scarf covering for the obi pillow functionally serving to hide any structural elements like the obi makura and to hold the bow up, the obiage is a beautiful hand-dyed layer that visually serves as an accent to the overall look, much like a belt may in western attire. After the pillow straps are firmly tied, the obiage is loosely tied and left hanging temporarily while other finishing touches are added. Samantha unties and removes the koshihimo as Sensei delicately weaves the final tie or obijime through the bow. Available in many styles and colors, this particular cord is hand dyed and woven with silver threads, adding to its formality. It is firmly pulled and tied in the front, adding another accent to the kimono coordination while also securing the obi in place. The kimono clip is removed and the kimono adjusted to ensure Natalie's neck is exposed and all of the collars can be seen. Besides any last tunings, the final decorative element is finalized. Gunji Sensei ties the vibrant obiage in a unique way and tucks in the ends. Likened to origami or three-dimensional art, the bow in the back can be folded in hundreds of ways. Often representing bows and flowers, it is sometimes difficult to believe these works of art 
could be made from a single flat piece of fabric. Natalie is joined by Andrew, who has also been dressed in formal kimono. Although not quite as complicated as Natalie's, men's kimono also requires specific elements and takes time to put on properly. Assisted by Japan House director Jennifer Gunji Balsrud, Andrew looks very handsome wearing a monsuki, or formal men's kimono with family crest showing, and hakama, skirt-like pants traditionally worn by samurai and associated with martial arts. Each year at Hina Matsuri, we dress volunteers in formal kimono to represent the emperor and empress. This year, we want to thank Natalie and Andrew for taking on this role, looking quite regal as they sit together in front of our Hina Don. A special thanks to Gunji Sensei, Samantha, and Jennifer for taking the time to teach us this special and unique traditional Japanese art. Now let's watch as volunteer Lily demonstrates how to put together our Hina Matsuri Ikebana craft kit featuring an emperor and empress and flowers.
Thank you for watching Japan House Shares Hina Matsuri. We hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Join us on Friday, April 1st, as we present Japan House Shares Kokeshi, featuring 30 local artists interpreting this iconic Japanese doll into personalized works of art for the 20th anniversary of the Boneyard Arts Festival.